Okay, after all that, I have decided it's time to drain the radiator. I'm going to pull it out. What's really cool is there's a valve here with a drain hose. I can just drain it into this jug here and uh, reuse it. I'll give it a try. Okay, got it loose. Take the cap off. Oh, there it goes. All right. Fill it up. All right. Got that thing all drained. It looks pretty good. Wasn't that much in there. I think it was a little low. Hopefully I can reuse this. It looks okay. I don't see anything weird with it. There's no oil in it or anything. That's a good sign. So to get this out, pull the hoses. Uh, big bolt here that secures it to the, I guess, the dash. I think I'm going to have to take the fan shroud out because I don't know that I can lift this up and over and clear the fan. But if I unbolt the fan shroud and just push it to the side, I can pull the radiator out and then pull the fan shroud out. Cable connections, i got to get those off. Um, I don't know that there's anything in the bottom. I think it's just cradles in there. Oh, check this out, if you didn't already know. There's a screen, protective screen, that sits in front of the radiator. So you can pull that out once in a while, clean it out. That's pretty neat. Every time I turn around, every time I check something out on this tractor, I'm really impressed with it. No wonder they were so popular. Well, if I pull this hose off, I imagine it's going to lose some more fluid. Not too bad. Looks like I got to pull this guy off too um, to get this screwed on here. And these look like they're a Torx and an M10 or maybe a 5 16th. Well, there must be something else holding it because it doesn't want to come right out. There are two oil cooler lines on the bottom of this radiator. One right there, one right here. Right there, this guy. So that's impressive. That's really cool. Um, makes my job a little harder. So now I'm second guessing pulling the radiator. 
I'd have to clean those fittings off first and it's going to lose oil. Hmm. Well, I got a decision to make, I guess. The lines are not leaking, so I don't really want to touch them. Ah, it's never easy. Looks like I can get this fan off pretty easily. I can move the shroud all the way forward and I can reach back in here and loosen these M10 nuts. Well, they're bolts actually. I can loosen these M10 bolts. They're not very tight. So I should be able to just break them loose with a wrench and then get them off by hand. Fan and the spacer come right out. I'll have to leave everything in hook so I can get everything back together. So, not a big deal. Okay, now that all this is out of the way, I'm going to take the air cleaner off. And I may or may not remove the carburetor. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't decided yet. It's, I tend to change my mind a lot as I get farther into it, like I did with the radiator. I thought that would come right out, but nope. The thing is, I, I could have pulled it out, right? I could have I could have pulled that radiator out, pulled those fittings apart. But the thing is, if you've got hydraulic fittings that are not leaking and they're covered with dirt, which these are on the bottom, you want to leave them alone if you can. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, They'll leak. I mean, it, you crack them open and they'll never be the same if you don't do it right. And it's it's kind of hard to get to, and I just didn't want to take any chances. If there's nothing wrong with it, I'm not going to mess with it. Well, this is plenty nasty. There's balls in there. Dung beetle's been in here. Looks like take those three screws off, that should come up. I'm not sure what's going on with these. Ah, okay, there's a plate, there's a plate under there. Okay, now I see it. Couple of studs, it looks like, hold this plate on. I got everything off that I think I need to get off. I went ahead and just used my vacuum and an old toothbrush and just dry brushed a lot of the dirt away. And that helped a lot. That's going to be a lot easier than trying to soak everything down with some kind of degreaser and then hosing it off. Uh, it'll be a lot less messy this way. Um, I got to make a cover for the carburetor throat to make sure I don't get anything down in there. For now, I got the choke plate closed with an earplug <laughs> through the... Uh, through the vent on it. I've made another executive decision to remove the wiring harness from the engine in order to clean it. I got engine degreaser, just the traditional type, and it, it warns about wiring and electronics and all that stuff. So I thought, better play it safe. Looks like there's just one harness, so I'm gonna try to follow the routing here 
and figure out how it goes on so that I can get it back on when I'm done. All right, let's see, we got zip tie here, right above this boss. One black zip tie holding the thing on, and then we've got, oh no, does that have to come off? Hmm. It appears it might have to come off. I think I'm gonna take this fan bracket off, because that will reveal the harness, and then, uh, make that a lot easier. The harness is actually zip tied to the bracket. The bracket looks like it's held on by four bolts, couple M10s. Oh, that's a different one. That's uh, looks M10, M8. That's the wrench size. And then these sensors, oh, it looks like they're just screwed on. Hard to see with all the dirt. So I should be able to back those screws out, loosen those, and then the harness should come right out. So a uh, <clears throat> M12 socket and an M10 socket took these off. All right, just need to cut a couple zip ties and this will come off, I think, hopefully. Really hard to do one handed. Oh, six bolts. Wow, that really opened it up. That helps a lot. Looks like I just need to unscrew these sensors. I guess these are maybe engine speed sensors or crank position sensors. And then, uh, yeah, this harness should come right out. Nice. Got to make sure I use the right size Phillips screwdriver for these. Um, fortunately, I've got quarter inch drive with a Phillips bit. I'm able to get these out pretty easily. These are just mag pickups for the coils. Uh, what threw me is there's one on each side. Well, there's two coils, so that makes sense. They're not uh, crank position sensors or anything that elaborate. Got a little pressure switch here too at the very end of the wiring harness. All right, well, plans change yet again. So got the last connection off over there. I thought all was good, and then discovered there's a part of the harness that goes down, down here somewhere. Right down here. It goes down in there somewhere. I don't know where it goes. I don't feel like chasing it. I have a feeling it might be behind this uh, flywheel, but I'm not certain. Uh, my lighting is terrible. I got a spotlight here, but I can't see down in there very well and everything's just choked up with dirt. So what I'm going to do is just pull all this stuff off to the side while I wash it and try to cover it and keep it protected that way. This is, uh, this is like the main connector I pulled apart. It is nasty. Just dust. I don't really see any corrosion in there, so that's that's a good sign. But that's just oof, that needs to be cleaned. And I've got some contact cleaner. I can spray that out, no problem. Uh, these are pretty primitive connections. It's not that big of a deal if they get wet. You just want to make sure you dry them off. I might I might blast them off with some uh, compressed air. But I'd like to get this this control box off. I don't really want to spray that. Just a couple connections right here, and it should quote unquote come off. Okay, almost there to get this thing washed. I covered the carburetor with a plastic cap 
from a chewing gum container and held it down with a zip tie. It's not going anywhere. Got the harness kind of pulled out of the way. And uh, these connections came right off, no problem. And uh, what's next? I guess, I guess I'll just kind of roll it outside. I'm going to hose it off with some engine degreaser. And then I'm debating whether to just gently rinse it off with a hose or put the power washer on it. it seems like the power washer just kind of blew the stuff everywhere. If I rinse it off gently, that might actually be better. But uh, we'll see. It is a warm, windy day, and I am going to try to clean this engine off with some engine degreaser and uh, see what that gets me. So what I've done is I've got a drip pan right here, and I'll just kind of hose it off and kind of let it soak. Let the runoff go into the pan of oil dry and hopefully not make too big of a mess. First iteration looks quite a bit better. I sprayed it down, uh, let it sit for a minute, and I agitated it with a brush in some spots, and then I just kind of rinsed it off with a hose. Uh, looks like I am going to need the power washer to get up in these crevices and stuff. So I got that all prepped and ready, and I'm going to keep cracking away at it, see what I come up with. So this is just one side. I haven't touched the other side yet, but so far so good. As long as I'm gentle, take my time. I shouldn't uh, put any of this stuff at risk. It did get wet, but it's, it's all right. It still has, uh, still has grease all over it, but I can wipe that down with contact cleaner or whatever. Um, hopefully there's no collateral damage. Alrighty, here's the end result, or close to the end result. Just uh, kept spraying, scrubbing, and then washing with a hose, or a power washer. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some spots I'll find where I'll have to do some touch-up work. Uh, but overall, the engine degreaser did a pretty good job. Oh, it's too windy. That's better. Uh, <clears throat> just got to let it dry now. When I was done with the degreaser, I went ahead and sprayed it down with my soapy engine degreaser, not the oily stuff that, that, uh, that I got at the hardware store. Yeah, and that seemed to, that seemed to really clean it up. Just kind of finish it off with soapy water. Here's the other side of the engine. Looks quite a bit better. Yeah, there's some crevices in there, nooks and crannies. I'll have to just get in there with a, some solvent and a rag around the finger and just kind of clean it up. But the back well, looks a lot better. Looks pretty good. I'll let it dry off and then start cleaning the wiring.